Hey everyone and welcome to a new format of the Formula 1 race debrief. We're going to focus on 5 key points of the race, 5 to watch points from 5 key points we're moving to 5 to watch points. I'm still in Indianapolis at my engineer's place. Those pictures behind me are made by Kate, his wife, and they're really good. I think I'm right here. There's Takuma Sato, Sebastian Borde. Anyway, Monaco. Many things to talk about. The win for Perez and his contract extension. The rain. Really good race from Gasly. Orkan Hamilton penalty. So let's go. The first point to watch is Ferrari. Ferrari pole position, first row, locked. One, two, in the race, two and four. How can that happen? That shouldn't happen in Monaco when you're first and two in qualifying. You should be one and two at the end of the race. They would not listen to Charles when he asked for inters. They got undercut by Perez. They went too late. They even got undercut by Verstappen and Sainz. Came to the pit, inters, straight dry, double stack pit stop, lost time. That's not good for Ferrari. That's not good for Charles Leclerc. Barcelona should have won the race. Engine issue. Monaco should have won the race. Strategy issue. Imola was on for P2. He spun. So that's a lot of points gone for Charles and Ferrari. Obviously, the season is not over, but they started 2020 very strong because in 2021, they completely stopped developing the car to focus on 2022, whilst Red Bull was actually fighting for the World Championship in 2021. So I see Red Bull being getting stronger and stronger, and Ferrari may not have what it takes to fight them. I hope they do, but my feeling is that it's going to go more towards Red Bull. But again, I may be wrong. The other point to watch or not to watch is the delay. One hour delay of the race start. Yes, the first water, it was too much water at the beginning. When they launched the race, started the race, first of all, it was a bit messy, just the communication. Then the race went uh, behind the safety car and too much rain. Red flag was the right thing. What I don't understand is after the red flag, two things. First thing is why do the, did the driver had to be on extreme tires and not didn't have the choice, right? Uh, some of them would have started on inters. And second point, I wish we've had um, a standing start. You can do standing start on a raid you know when you're in second gear very light very gentle on throttle drop the clutch slowly and roll from there so it's possible and i think it would have been interesting to see who gets a better start and, and change a bit the order but i felt like the communication around the delay wasn't the best could have been uh, done better i dealt with better but that was a point maybe not to watch right Mick Schumacher, big crash. I don't know why the car got split in two pieces. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a decent impact into a fast part of the circuit, but it was very strange to understand why the rear end went away from the front end while the gearbox was was broken. Watch the crash, tell me what you think. But I'm a bit uh, I'm a bit confused in, in why did the, the car split in two parts. Kevin Magnussen pointed right that with the budget cap, it'd be nice that uh, the budget doesn't go into repairing car, but developing car, because he knows that's not one of the strengths from Haas. And Mick has already crashed in everyone in Jeddah I believe and that's another everyone so it's a lot of damage on the car that makes it very hard for the budget cap you know we've been hearing the top team saying it's gonna be struggling to stay underneath it and Kevin wants the upgrade he wants to do well he had, a, he had an engine failure qualifying didn't go that well but they looked fast out there so that was good to see Gasly started 17th finished 11th if you want to have a clear view of Core drivers set up a pass. You should watch Gasly on board. It was really, really good to see. He didn't overtake on the braking zone like you would expect. He would cross over. Obviously on Inters, he was much faster than everyone in extreme. But saying so, in Monaco, it's very hard to pass. So he had to be, he had to be creative. He had to open the entry or cut, um, go around. Yeah, find, find ways of overtaking in Monaco. That's tough. It wasn't well paid because he didn't get points at the end. But still, it was a good drive. It was fun to watch. I especially liked the one outside, uh, inside of the, on the exit of the tabac corner it's definitely not a place you overtake can't remember who he got out there but you know he pushed it to close on the inside opened the entry cut mid corner went on throttle had a bit of a wheel spin there but managed to overtake before the swing put and that's a that's a very cool overtake maneuver there and then we had uh, we had Orkin versus Hamilton. So Orkin got penalized five second time penalty, but it's not for the contact that they made in turn one, as a lot of people thought. It is for Orkin that uh, actually later in the race completely squeezed Lewis against the guardrail on the pit exit. The first maneuver was 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 racing. Robbing is racing, right? Lewis tried. He didn't have the momentum going into the corner. Orkin kind of knew that. Closed the door. They made small contact, but that was okay. The second one. It's not easy. It's not a bad move. It's just a little bit, a little bit late for Mokon, I think. On the straight line, he can open a little bit, so Lewis goes in, and then and then he closes it down. It doesn't really react to Lewis' move. It doesn't look like it does react to Lewis' move, but he squeezes him really hard against the guardrail a lot. 
they want a car with and that's what you're supposed to kind of leave a car with with the the other car right if you know it's gonna be there so i think it was uh i don't know clumsy is not the word but it was just like a little bit unnecessary uh, i was trying hard and, and you know monaco is a tough one but at that point lewis was so much faster than Ocon that uh, again the first the battle was really good Ocon was was playing very well he was staying mid corner mid track it wasn't allowing lewis to go around that was pretty good to see the first robbing was racing the second one i felt just went a little bit too far that's why Ocon got a penalty so i kind of you know if it was for the first contact i would say well, why would you get a penalty there but that one yeah i think um, i think that one is a five second penalty and that's kind of sadly for Ocon uh deserve Next race in two weeks, Baku. That's gonna be something. Baku is always a lot of good racing. I think Red Bull is gonna be strong there, but I'm looking to see if Ferrari can get the top speed. I'm looking forward to see if Mercedes can get the car to be faster. They've always been pretty good in Baku. Looking forward to see what the midfield does. It's gonna be an exciting track, definitely, with a huge straight line. But um, yeah, Monaco, Monaco is always, it's the race that you want to win in the race, in the year. It's the most glamour race of the calendar. It's not the most interesting one on TV, and there's a lot of talk about shall we change Monaco or not. I don't think so. I think just the cars got too long, too wide for Monaco, but I, I don't really want to see the track being changed. It's almost like we need a different car for Monaco, a smaller one, Formula One car, maybe a Formula Two, something like that, just for Monaco. But uh, I love that race. You do the race on, on Saturday in qualifying and you want to make sure you get it right. Back with kind of the other opposite backward is so much top speed straight line here at zone that you actually do the race on sunday and not on saturday so it's gonna be exciting to to watch please always make sure that you leave me a comment to subscribe your like i'll uh, speak with you very soon